Hey guys, it's Misty from The Book Rat, and it's time for my February Rewind. So if you don't know how this works, we're going to take a look back at what I read in February with a quick thumbs up, thumbs down rating. So here's what I read. Immortal Beloved by Kate Tiernan. This gets, like, all of the thumbs that I have, and if I had more I would give them. I was hesitant with this one. It's about immortality, and the main character has been just avoiding being a decent human being for 460 years. She's pretty much just an ancient club kid. And I was really leery of how that would work out and whether I wanted to read that. And there were so many things that could have gone wrong the whole time I was reading this, and they never did. So I really have to hand it to Kate Tiernan for that. I love when my inner bitch is thwarted of a good rant, you know? I would much rather like something than not like something. Very, very pleasantly surprised with this really engaging style. I loved Nas, the main character. Um, I thought it had great world building. And as I said, all of those little things that you expect not to like, she made work, which I think is really talented and also just a little sly. I followed that up with Darkness Falls by Kate Tiernan. This is book two. And even though I loved Immortal Beloved, I was still a little leery going into this because second books in a series often suffer the dreaded sophomore slump. I had also heard that one of the crucial elements of the story is that Nas leaves River's Edge, which is a giant step backwards, and so I was a little anxious to see how that was going to play out, but again, thumbs up, Kate Tiernan likes to F with my head. There were times when I felt it was a little too long, it was a little too circular, um, just, you know, we kept covering the same ground, but for the most part, just as enjoyable. One of the things I mentioned in my written review is that with the second book in a series, I think authors tend to struggle to find the balance between growing the series, but yet keeping the same tone and the same excitement as you had in book one. And I think Tiernan does a pretty good job of that. There is huge amounts of growth across the board, even for the, the huge step backwards that Nas takes in wanting to leave. But the tone isn't sacrificed to achieve that growth. Nas is still Nas. Everyone stays really true to their characters, but makes understandable progression for their character. So, I would recommend picking this series up. The Statistical Probability of Love at First Sight by Jennifer E. Smith. I have mentioned before that I'm not a contemporary fan and that I have a black and shriveled little heart, so it's always a gamble to read Love at First Sight especially, but thumbs up. I thought Smith dealt with the emotions really well, not just of the growing relationship, but also of what both characters are sort of working through. Um, I thought all of the attraction that they felt had basis, but I also thought that it was grounded in not just flirtation, which is really nice. There were serious things going on, they were really companionable as well as flirty. And so that worked, and it made it a little more realistic. I sort of judge the whole love at first sight thing by whether I think it's actually just lust at first sight, and whether I think that there's a potential for a real relationship to be developed. And for these guys, I do think so. Beyond that, though, the whole time the story is just really charming, there's more depth than I was expecting, and it's just a really good read. So take that, Black and Shriveled Heart. For the rest of the month, I delved into my fairy tale stack so that I could prepare for Fairy Tale Fortnite, which is the last two weeks of April. So I read three this month, and all of next month pretty much is going to be fairy tales. But here's what I read: Heart's Blood by Julia Marillier. This gets a thumbs up. It's a Beauty and the Beast retelling, but you know, sort of loosely. Um, and as with everything Marillier writes, it's fantastic. And I don't think anything ever will necessarily top those two. The fact of the matter is, she can write, she can craft a romance, and she can give you a great idea of place and history, just like no other. So, Dragon Slippers by Jessica Day George. I'm a big fan of Jessica Day George, but I hadn't read this series. Um, and I actually talked to her last year for Fairytale Fortnight. Sun and Moon, Ice and Snow is my favorite book by her, and one of my favorite fairy tale retellings just across the board. Um, and so when we were interviewing her for Fairy Tale Fortnight, we were chatting about that and how, you know, she put her heart into it and it's the one closest to her heart, and yet it's the least known, um, which is 
pretty common phenomenon for authors, and how everyone loves this one. And I had never read this one, or at that point I don't know if I had even heard of it. Going into it I had high hopes since she said this is her most popular. And I can see why. It's very charming, it's a very cute story. Um, I love a strong heroine, and she definitely is one. It's got a great sort of Cinderella thing, but it's more a Cinderella who rescues herself and the prince in the bargain. So definitely looking forward to reading the rest of the series, which is Dragonflight and Dragon Spear. Yeah, Dragon Spear. And I read Shadows on the Moon by Zoe Marriott. I bought this last year. This is the UK copy. It's not out in the US yet. Um, and I bought it as soon as it came out. I think I actually pre-ordered it because it sounded fantastic. But I knew that I wanted to read it for this fairy tale fortnight, and that if I read it too soon, I would forget everything by the time I reviewed it, because I'm a procrastinator and I would not have reviewed it right away. So I saved it, even though it kept calling my name, and finally read it, and it gets a big thumbs up. It is a retelling of Cinderella that is sort of loosely set in feudal Japan. It's not really, but that's what it most resembles. And it's stellar. It's very dark and unflinching, and so I think that there are going to be people that take issue with this book. However, that's what I loved about it. Um, it's very complex and uses the Cinderella story wisely without beating you over the head with it. And again, it's a strong main character. Now, it takes her a while to get to that strength. She has her mind set on vengeance the entire story and is pursuing that relentlessly. And so there is that sort of strength, but the real strength comes in realizing that she can have a different life and and realizing her true worth. And so there's just a lot of good balance, a lot of good dark and light, there's a lot of good unhealthy versus healthy, a really good take on pain and loss, but also on love. And it just really works. I have one last book that I started in February but haven't finished yet, so it will be in the March TBR, but it is The Girl Who Circumnavigated Fairyland in a Ship of Her Own Making by Catherine M. Valente. Longest title in the world. Even abbreviated, it's the longest title. Not very far, but I like it so far. I was actually supposed to read this before Shadows on the Moon um, because I let everyone decide what I was going to read next, but I cheated on you guys and read Shadows instead because it was calling my name more, so sorry. But that's what I read in February, and as you can see, there were thumbs going up all over the place in that. I didn't have one thumbs down, so that's an excellent month of reading. Hopefully March will be the same. If you do your own monthly rewind or wrap-up or whatever, make sure you leave me a link or let me know about it and I will check it out. And of course there is a linky on thebookrat.com for you to link up your videos or your posts and share them. And happy reading!